Uh, tutorials and courses are not always the best place to discover niche tricks and fresh workflows. That kind of experimentation usually happens on social media where people are constantly pushing Blender in new and unexpected ways. So in this video, let's look at a few of those ideas, starting with this soft body setup using a lattice by Riley Brown. Um, soft body simulation in Blender is usually pretty slow, but when you apply it to a lattice, it becomes surprisingly fast. Because of that, a lot of Blender users have been experimenting with it to create all kinds of effects, from flipping a burger, to messing around with these nuts, to simulating hundreds of soft objects at once. The main limitation is that this trick does not support collisions between multiple lattices, but the setup itself is very simple. Just create a lattice, give it soft body physics, and use it to deform any other objects you want. Next up is this Fractured Steps animation by Cartesian Caramel. Everywhere the character steps, the ground breaks apart, which would be perfect for a superhero landing, fight scene, or any heavy impact jump animation. There are several ways to approach this effect. One option is to use a particle system to trigger the initial fractures, then use geometry nodes to handle the animation and timing of the pieces. What would really help here is a fully procedural Voronoi fracture system that is separate from cell fracture. Cell fracture is destructive, and once the fractures are created, you cannot go back and edit them, which makes iteration painful. On that note, Faustkinds did exactly what many people have been asking for by creating a modifier that effectively replaces the outdated cell fracture add-on. Because it is a modifier, the entire setup is fully procedural and stackable. You can add another fracture modifier on top to generate smaller pieces, adjust parameters at any point, and keep everything non-destructive. It is also significantly faster, and the gaps between the fractured pieces are small enough to be invisible to the camera. In the demo, the gaps are intentionally exaggerated and given a bright material so they are easier to see. If we can push this further by adding more edge detail and randomness, like what you see in Cartesian Caramel's example, we would be very close to a Houdini-style RBD fracture node inside Blender. Another amazing workflow I came across this week is from Hamdi Amer. He has an add-on called Bone Path Visualizer, which he is selling on Superhive. The idea is simple but extremely powerful. Instead of keyframing motion the traditional way, you draw a path that the animation follows, then edit and visualize that path directly in the viewport. This completely changes how you think about animation blocking. Rather than wrestling with curves in the graph editor, you can just sketch the trajectory an object or bone should take and refine it visually. It works for very simple motions, like an object falling or sliding along a path, but it really shines with more complex setups involving rigs and bones. You get clear visual feedback, faster iteration, and a much more intuitive way to design motion, especially for arcs, follow through, and directional movement. We can also look at a few EV workflows and see how they stack up against cycles. In this side-by-side -side comparison, the difference is barely noticeable, which is impressive considering how different the two engines are. EV usually takes more deliberate setup to look good. Lighting, materials, and scene control matter a lot more, but when it's done right, the results can be surprisingly close. Gleb Alexandrov recently released an EV focused course if realistic EV rendering is something you want to dive deeper into. Eevee is also steadily improving when it comes to skin and organic forms. You can see that clearly in this render by Ha Artem Shapiro, where tentacles are waving around with convincing shading and motion, something that would have been unthinkable in Eevee not too long ago. That said, you still rarely see Eevee used for live action integration or green screen work. But if you lean into a stylized look, its limitations start to feel more like artistic choices. That's exactly what's happening in Ray Wakui's render, where Eevee's quirks become part of the visual identity rather than something to fight against. We also have some stress test renders from Shazod Boyhanov, where he pushes Eevee through several demanding workflows to see where it breaks and where it surprisingly holds up. These tests range from building a fully volumetric tree to rendering dense grass using vertex displacement, both of which are areas you would normally expect cycles to dominate. It is a good reminder that Eevee is no longer just a preview engine. It is becoming a serious option for certain types of final renders when performance and iteration speed matter. Next up is a neat trick for rendering 2D fire effects from Hamdi Amur. These days, 2D effects go hand in hand with 3D animation, 
especially if you look at how shows like Arcane or films like Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse blend stylized 2D elements with fully 3D scenes. The setup itself is surprisingly simple. You start by drawing a shape, then animate its UV coordinates using a noise texture to create that flowing, flickering motion. From there, you can layer additional effects, color ramps, masks, distortion, glow, but that UV animation is the core foundation that sells the fire. It is lightweight, flexible, and fits perfectly into stylized workflows where realism matters less than motion, rhythm, and visual impact. Another one from Hamdi Amur is this octopus tentacle rig. I am not great at character animation or rigging myself, but this one is genuinely impressive. The way the arm wraps around any object it touches feels very close to how a real octopus tentacle behaves, with that natural grip, curl, and contact response. What stands out here is how controllable it looks while still feeling organic. Instead of manually keyframing every bend and twist, the rig seems to handle contact and wrapping in a much more procedural, rule-based way. This kind of setup opens the door to believable creature interaction without needing deep rigging or animation expertise, which is exactly the kind of workflow trick you rarely find in traditional tutorials, but often see emerging from experimentation like this. If simplifying animation is the goal this year, this is one you're going to love. Riley Brown has created a third-person kit that lets you animate a character using a game controller, almost exactly like you would control a character in a third-person game. Instead of keyframing every movement, you can just play the character, walk, turn, idle, move the camera, and record that motion directly into animation data. It turns animation into performance rather than technical work, which is huge for blocking, previs, and rough passes. You can focus on timing, weight, and intent first, then refine things later, instead of getting stuck fighting controls from the start. Sometimes simple is exactly what you need to tell a story, and Layla shows that perfectly with these low-poly food assets combined with physics. There is nothing overly complex going on here, clean shapes, simple materials, and just enough simulation to give the objects weight and believability. She is not using Blender in this case, but Cinema 4D instead. That said, this is the kind of setup Blender can replicate just as easily with rigid bodies, basic collisions, and minimal shading. Here's another example by Giannis Sourdis, again made in Cinema 4D. And yeah, at some point you start asking yourself why so many of these animations seem to come from C4D. Like, there is some secret sauce we are missing. There really is no secret. What Cinema 4D has going for it is a long history of motion design first tools. Very approachable MoGraph systems, easy to use deformers, and dynamics that are fast to set up and hard to break. That makes it attractive for quick, idea-driven animations like these, where iteration speed matters more than technical depth. Another great example is this animation by you know, Nikita Diakour. On the surface, it looks extremely simple. Basic shapes tracing real objects, paired with real-world textures, but that simplicity is deceptive. A lot of thought and effort goes into making something like this feel convincing. The abstraction is doing heavy lifting here. It is a good reminder that simple styles are often some of the hardest to pull off well. Next up, we have VFX Therapy showing how you can create a convincing waterfall render using nothing more than a simple mesh and a few smart shader tricks. No heavy simulations, no long bake times, just a clean setup that relies on shading and motion to sell the effect. Faustkinds builds on that idea and pushes it further, adding more detail and variation, all still inside Blender. It is a great example of how far you can go when you understand the fundamentals and know where to cheat intelligently. And that's it for this week. There are so many useful tricks and workflows you can easily miss if you only stick to tutorials and courses. If you wanna see more of these, subscribe to my new newsletter where I'll be sharing this kind of stuff along with free Blender assets. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.